Ee, herkese merhabalar. Ee, bugün e, Hi-Fi Talks'un 3. bölümünde e, klip e, üzerine konuşacağız. Ve bugün sizin için aslında çok önemli bir konuğumuz var. Bugün e, Michael Grato e, kendisi Amerika'dan, Indianapolis'ten katılıyor bize. Ve e, kendisi Klipş'te e, ürün müdürü ve pazarlama e, müdürü olarak çalışıyor. E, aslında background'ında e, uf, e, bir e, ses mühendisliği de var. Dolayısıyla aslında işin tam e, ortasından geliyor. E, şimdi ben İngilizceye geçeceğim. Ancak e, birazdan e, İngilizce konuşmalarımızın e, akabinde altyazılar zaten size takip ediyor olacak. E, Michael, hi again. Thank Hello. you so much for uh, participation of our Hi-Fi Talk series. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah. Uh, we are doing hi-fi talks for actually for many uh, topics like, you know, for example, Bluetooth in uh, loudspeaker market uh, and also the brands and also other technical. Some of them is technical. Some of them is just, uh, you know, conversational topics. Uh, today, uh, we really wanted to, uh, you know, talk someone from the uh, one of the best brands, best acoustic brand in the world, Klipsch. And here we are. Well, thank you very much. It's great to be here. So, uh, I think it's uh, as a you know standard. Uh, can you actually introduce yourself and yeah. uh, whatever you do in the Clips company? Yeah, of course. So, my name is Mike Barato. I'm the senior product manager for what we call Connected Audio. Uh, connected Audio is really any any audio device, uh, any home theater product, really that connects to a network. So, sound bars. Um, Uh, wireless home theater, you know, any any plug and play high performance audio solution. So I oversee uh, the product development, meaning, you know, what products should we build? When should we build them? What features should be included in those? And then I uh, sort of, in addition to defining the product, what it should, you know, of course, what it should be, what it should look like, what it should sound like. I work with our marketing team to come up with a go to market strategy uh, around that. Uh, that product line. So been with Klipsch uh, about eight years now. And uh, yeah, like you said, it's so, it's a joy to work for them. We're one of the, the greatest speaker brands of all time. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it's actually eight years is a really, really long time, actually. Yeah. And to feel connected with the brand, actually, I yeah. think uh, the latest products also, uh, uh, you know, uh, mirroring that passion of yours, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny you brought that up. I mean, it's, it's a building that you walk into and everyone is, is passionate about music. They're passionate about high performance acoustics. And, and even if they're a more casual listener, there's still a passion for the brand and a passion for, for music. You know, a lot of us are musicians. Uh, a lot of us are, you know, got into audio through um, recording or music creation. Um, so yeah, there's there's sort of this palpable passion in the building for for audio, which is which is a fun thing to walk into every day. Okay, uh, <clears throat> uh, many people know actually uh, Klipsch and uh, the other brands. There are not so many brands who can produce really really unique sound actually in the world. So uh, Klipsch is one of them. So many people uh, vary about the brand and the products, but you know, as always, there are some people who actually uh, needs to know a uh, little bit uh, about the, this kind of you know worldwide known brand too. Sure. So as a introduction of uh, Klipsch to those people, uh, how do you um, uh, tell us the Klipsch uh, as a 75, I, mean, I think it's 74 or yeah. 75, Yeah, uh, year old company. I mean, uh, so what is Clifford actually? Man, so it, that's <laughs> that's a really funny story. We always go back to uh, this man, Paul W. Klipsch, Paul Wilbur Klipsch, our founder, who was a bit of a, a we call him a madman, a bit of a genius. <laughs> um, but he uh, was, a, was a music lover, again, going back to this passion for music. And he, uh, as the story goes, would go to see his wife sing opera, and then he'd come home and, and try to play back uh, the same type of music on his home hi-fi system. At the time, it was obviously a mono system oh. in 1946. 
and you just didn't get, the same, didn't get the same dynamics and didn't get the same um, immersive sound that you get in a live music performance. So he set out to to build his own speaker, and and seventy five years later, here we are. So his uh, his uh, genius and his calculations actually determined that building a horn loaded speaker, uh, and we can get into the the the specifics on that, but uh, a horn loaded speaker is really the best way to to get a dynamic, real, true to life sound out of a speaker. Uh, so that was uh, Paul's first first product was the Klipsch horn and 75 years later, we are still building horn loaded uh, speakers and, and even horn loaded sound bars. So it's, I think it's the same in every uh, industry in science. Uh, you need to be a little bit ma uh, mad, actually. A little <laughs> bit genius yeah. and madness. I think it's melting in the same pot uh, all the time. Yeah. Because when you think about it in, you know, in other uh, businesses, like I said, science, etc., mm -hmm. it's the same. I think that passion uh, drives through madness mm -hmm. actually creates this kind of uh, unique uh, stories, I guess. So, Absolutely. but I didn't know about that um, uh, story about the uh, you know, opera thing. Actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, the company was founded on just a passion for live music and a, a desire to recreate that live music experience. And we still we still try to do that today in every speaker we design. So uh, we're certainly following Mr. Klipsch's legacy in, in every speaker we build. So you mentioned about the Klipsch horn, actually. The Klipsch horn yeah. at the uh, first uh, years was the name of the uh, product also, right. but it is not only product, it's kind of a, a unique, uh, uh, he invented something very unique yeah. in the uh, acoustic uh, market. So there, are, like I said at the beginning, there are not so many uh, companies who can produce really uh, lifelike sound. So right. Clip is one of them and Every uh, uh, every brand who has this uh, gift has actually unique uh, drivers, transducers. Mm -hmm. So Clipshorn is one of them, and I yep. think it's uh, living among us for seven to five years. Yes. So can you give us uh, what are the reasons? As uh, maybe technically, maybe uh, you know, uh, as a uh, hearable kind of. Uh, difference than the other brands and other drivers of course yeah this is the the prime example of horn loaded technology and what what horn loaded driver design can do uh, for the listening experience the clipsch horn again was was paul's first uh first product first speaker product and it is one of one of the only if if not the only uh fully horn loaded three-way speaker on the market Meaning, not only is the tweeter horn loaded and the mid range, it has a one inch uh, compression driver for the, the high frequency, has a two inch mid range driver for the, for the mid range. Uh, those are both horn loaded, but the 15 inch uh, low frequency driver, the woofer, is also part of a folded horn design. Meaning that 15 inch driver plays into um, or resonates into a horn which helps amplify just like it does on the tweeter, right? So that's a, yeah. that's a great example of a mid-range or maybe a high-frequency horn. You can see the, the diaphragm in the back, and that plays into that horn that you see there uh, towards the bottom. And and it's it's just like putting your hands up to your mouth and shouting at uh, a friend you see across the street. Same idea. It focuses that sound, makes it certainly more dynamic and, and more efficient, which is most important. So if you have, a obviously, a horn-loaded... Uh, high frequency or, or compression driver uh, that does a lot for the high end. But if you have a horn loaded low frequency driver, you're getting that efficiency, you're getting the dynamics. And out of a 15 inch driver, it allows us to play back sub 20 hertz with an efficiency, uh, a lack of distortion, and a presence that most people are not used to hearing, especially in a residential speaker. So you actually yeah. hear. You know, if, you, if you've ever heard clean, true 20 hertz, it's really not something you hear. You just kind of feel it in your chest. And it's this visceral yeah. experience that you don't generally get with, with a traditional residential speaker.
uh, I, I think I felt the uh, everything you say uh, said actually uh, when we uh, when I first listened. I think uh, it was uh, success uh, back in the uh, IFA two thousand nineteen. I guess. Cool. So yeah. it was it was really clean, like you said. Actually, the yeah. problem I think in, in the uh, lot speaker uh, lot speakers is the cleanness. Actually, if yeah. it's uh, there. Are, really tiny but there is uh that's you know distortion actually but when i heard this first time uh, uh sixes it was really really clean and it was loud actually yes i think it's uh because of the also the horn uh, you know the shape yeah uh, because it's you know um you know strengthen the voice and make more bigger uh i think shape in it yeah and uh, by the way, sixes is, is like you said, is a residential uh, mm -hmm. loudspeaker. So uh, even you have this clear and very powerful sound, a uh, very tiny uh, speaker mm -hmm. act because you know there are lots of big, very big uh, right. high speakers. Right. Now, I think it is easier than uh, it is easier to do that. Uh, you know, uh, sound uh, in big uh ones because it's the same thing actually technology is just getting smaller but right. making this also uh not getting smaller it's be, uh, making you more problems and yeah. get more yep. technology more efforts so even in the fives which we will actually talk about at the uh, kind of a end of the video even in the fives they're not so much big uh right. actually they're really um we can say compact, yes. but it has really loud uh, uh, sound mm -hmm. and it's clean actually. Yes, yeah, and that's, you know, I mentioned efficiency a little bit ago and that's sort of uh, where we where we really thrive is the horn loaded technology allows the speakers to be incredibly efficient, meaning you can play louder out of our speakers with less amplifier power than a non horn loaded or direct radiating speaker. And, you know, it's not, it's not hard to make a speaker play loud. It's hard to make a speaker play loud and be clean at the same time. You know, as soon as you start to get past, uh, you know, the, the 12 o'clock position on the volume knob, with most speakers, you start to hear some distortion. Uh, you start to hear some, some sort of limiting uh, of the drivers themselves. Ours just play wide open, play very clean, and that's all because of that horn-loaded technology. Wonderful. Uh, do you use this uh, clip horn in uh, also passive and in also active speakers? Uh, the the clip horn itself, the the product, the clip horn, or the horn loaded technology. Horn loaded technology. Yeah, okay. so we use it um, really in every speaker we make, passive speakers, mm -hmm. powered speakers. Yeah. Obviously, the only place we don't use it is in headphones, uh, but it follows sort of the same. Uh, you know, you sort of have a built-in horn when you're using headphones in your ear canal. So it sort of follows the same principle. But yeah, we use it uh, in, in every speaker we make. So uh, we, like I said at the beginning, uh, let's talk about a little bit about Klipsch because uh, there are some people uh, who doesn't know about the brand. So let's embrace them. So right. it's also, a, a, again, kind of a, a edu educational video that we want uh, to create. Uh, maybe we can say, what is the active uh, power speaker yeah. and uh, also the passive speaker? Because uh, people who really wants to uh, step in into hi-fi side uh, that they, they have lots of questions what so uh, Bluetooth streaming is really uh, you know uh, really good like with uh, uh, as much as with the uh, cable one so what is the active yes. power what is the passive and sure. also uh, you know there are lots of questions so maybe yeah. this one is the I think the uh, most foundational question what is the exactly. powered active speaker and uh, the passive speaker? Sure. So a passive speaker, we'll start there. That's sort of a more traditional uh, speaker system in that it's a it's a floor standing or bookshelf speaker or really a, any speaker that plugs into a separate amplifier. So you would run speaker wire from an AV receiver or um, you know a, a two-channel amplifier, 
and your source would actually be plugged into the amplifier, whether it's you know your your phone or uh, whether it's a CD player or a Blu-ray player. The idea of a passive speaker is a speaker that needs to be plugged into an external amplifier. Which so you again, have to amplify the sound because correct. it doesn't have the power by itself correct. to uh, send the sound into your ears. Exactly right. And the advantage of that is you can sort of pick and choose your amplifier and pair that up with a speaker so you can kind of um, develop a sound that is more to your liking or more customized to your taste. Now, an active speaker system, and actually this is a great uh, a great shot. So the the two speakers you see there are our uh, R51Ms. So they are um, uh, passive speakers and you can see the cables running down the back of them that would yeah. plug into the amplifier on this shelf. So the amplifier there in the middle that is uh, more than likely hooked up to that turntable, that's part of the system and the amplifier does affect the sound. You know, it has its own sound signature and it passes that along to the active speakers, which then have their own sound signature. So you put these things together and can come up with uh, really great combinations of external amplifiers and passive speakers. Now an active speaker is a system that has the amplifier built in, included with the speaker. Yeah, and this is a great example of one of our active speaker systems that you mentioned earlier, the 6S. Yeah. And this was, this is, you know, again, a, a more traditional bookshelf speaker in terms of format or form factor, but you'll notice the turntable there. There's no amplifier mm -hmm. in sight because the turntable plugs directly into the speaker that has the amplifier included. So the advantage here is that it's an all-in-one system. Uh, you don't have to sort of piecemeal your own system together. You buy the speakers, you plug them into the wall, and you're ready to go. Another advantage that I like to talk about quite a bit is when we are building active speakers, we know what the amplifier sounds like, and we're able to optimize the drivers in the speaker, the woofer and the tweeter, for that amplifier specifically. So a lot of times with active speakers, we're able to sort of squeeze out through digital signal processing and, and digital tricks, we're able to squeeze out a little bit more performance uh, than we would out of a similarly sized and similarly specced passive speaker. Because with a passive speaker, you're trying to make it sound good with as many amplifiers as possible when you're designing that speaker. With an active speaker, because the amplifier is built in, we know exactly what it's supposed to sound like. We know exactly how to, again, optimize those drivers for that amplifier. So basically, if you want to create more of a, uh, more or less your own sound with yeah. your own you know, amplifier, yeah. uh, you need to buy a passive speaker because there are yeah. lots of variations, you know, lots of models to... Yeah. Uh, find your own taste actually because exactly. every amplifier also has its own characteristic so it directly uh, goes to the uh, transformation of this characteristic into the sound exactly. so also this is kind of a, um, a job to do so if you don't want to you know, you know uh, lost in the details yeah. and also you don't want to usually mainly uh, passive speakers are not uh, Bluetooth or uh, compatible. So right. if you want to really technological, really, uh, you know, standalone working uh, units, you should go and buy two active speakers, power exactly. speakers, we can say. Exactly. Uh, that's, I think, uh, uh, the easiest, uh, you know, separation of those. Yeah, exactly right. You know, 15 years ago, everyone was buying passive speakers yeah. because it was the only option. And you'd buy your AV receiver um, and you'd, you'd plug your speakers into the AV receiver. Now, you know, sound bars are such a ubiquitous product, such a universally adopted product because it is a plug and play solution and people don't want to uh, piecemeal together an amplifier with a pair of speakers. And I think it's, um, yeah, it's it's a sign of the times that people just want 
something that sounds good, something that's easy to connect and they don't have to, uh, you know, read the manual over and over to figure out how to hook it up. But on the, on the manufacturer side and on the engineering side, we are, uh, starting to build out higher performance products that are powered. So you don't have to sacrifice performance for convenience anymore. So uh, we talked about the Eclipse, uh, basically uh, uh, only Eclipse, but there are lots of technical details at the background and more precise uh, yeah. uh, production philosophy of Eclipse. Yeah. So uh, what do you, uh, what can you say about the other, you know, technical or uh, maybe we, you shouldn't say about technical, but uh, more production-wise uh, difference of Calypso action? Yeah, well, I I think something that we really value and something the brand has always valued is our engineering prowess. And uh, that is really on display at our, our headquarters in Indianapolis. We have a uh, one of the largest acoustic uh, engineering and, and research facilities in the Midwest. We have the largest anechoic chamber in the Midwest where we do all of our testing, but it's important that, that all of our driver design and all of our speaker tuning and crossover design is done in-house. So we're not relying on manufacturing partners uh, overseas to do that type of design work for us. It is all done by Chris Perrins, our chief acoustic engineer and his team in Indianapolis. And, and we really value that. And we see that as our core, uh, really our core value proposition is our ability to engineer our own speakers, put that engineering and, and research and development uh, into a product that uh, really uh, can outshine the competition at a, at a lower price, which I think is important. So uh, this is we talked about. Uh, this is the part we talked about actually that you can easily, um, you know, read on online throughout your website, throughout mm -hmm. lots of other you know a review website. But there is something that you cannot find uh, in these you know websites, which is the other aspect of being a, one of the you know uh, best acoustic uh, brand in the world is the passion for music. Yeah. Uh, for example, I uh, before this meet, uh, you know, uh, uh, recording, uh, and I think it was the beginning of our you know conversation with Emil, yeah. uh, Bernard and uh, Emily. So I just googled like uh, Michael Grado, and I saw dot uh, com. You know, oh, no. Michael So now I clicked on it. Huh. I just saw some lots of tracks. I said, I said, oh, maybe it's just a coincidence of name and surname. Yeah. I think he is not that. So today I actually clicked it again because of curiosity. Yeah. Then I just go uh, down and I see Instagram post of yours. So I think, and then I said to myself, okay, the production uh, and the marketing uh, people in the clips are basically musicians. Yeah. Because uh, you know that term too, uh, you are using uh, buy this product because you will hear the music as much as uh, the musician wants you to hear. So yeah. this is the basic you know, uh, marketing uh, tool that we're using yeah. And when you see it, it's true, actually. Yeah. Uh, really, really uh, interesting. So, man, you all of you, uh, uh, all the people who work for Eclipse are musicians <laughs> or something like that. A, a good portion. It's man. It's uh, I'm I'm blushing. I'm embarrassed that you found that. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, um, uh, you know, I I have a, a studio in my house where I record music and. Um, use our product to monitor what I'm listening to. Uh, a, a guy named Stan Stivers who uh, heads up our pro system design. So they do, um, you know, system design for commercial spaces. He has a studio in his house and he records and produces really great sounding music. Um, yeah, just music. Like we all got into audio, uh, certainly not for the, the money. We got into audio because we love we love listening to music and we love making music. And, you know, I remember I, I tell the story a lot, like my dad got me into the Beatles. And I remember when I was seven or eight, like he would put on hard days night and, you know, we watched the movie and listen to the record. And back in the sixties, when 
when music was recorded in stereo, it was either left or right. You had no sort of continuously variable pan. So I would sit with headphones on and listen to these records and I'd just listen to the left channel because you'd get, you know, Ringo's drum kit and George's mm -hmm. guitar. And then I'd switch over to the right channel and you'd get all the vocals and McCartney's bass. So it was, it wasn't just this obsession with music and with songcraft. It was more an obsession with um, how are these records made and what's sort of the technical aspect that goes into them. You know, George Martin, one of the greatest producers of all time, uh, because of that, I found myself every time I'd buy a CD or buy an album, I'd open it up to see who produced it. And it wasn't, it wasn't the musicians necessarily that caught my attention as much as the producers and the engineers that helped make those records. So I think you get a lot of that passion with people at Klipsch, either on the, the actual pure instrumental side and pure, pure musician side, or people that are uh, sort of more on the production side and music creation. But yeah, it's, I mean, the entire company, you walk into the building and it's uh, people that are passionate about music, people that are passionate about creative arts. Uh, and I think that's really important to the culture of the brand. Uh, you mentioned about, uh, you said creative arts actually. So yeah, uh, yeah the music is one of these uh, aspects. Uh, and there is another one is it actually the new business. Yeah. So as we can say, as I know also, uh, Cliff is, I think in the United States is the number one brand who, you know, uh, install the custom uh, cinemas, right. but also all around the world. Uh, I think half of the, or maybe six of the 60% of the, uh, uh, you know, commercial uh, yeah. cinemas has yeah. Cliff slot speakers. Uh, also, there are uh, another part of then the music. Uh, there's a cinema actually. Mm -hmm. So I think the sound bars, uh, uh, for example, fives and sixes is more for music, I guess, because they're bookshelf for the music. You can you know, uh, connect the turntable then yeah. like uh, we saw in the uh, picture actually. But there is another uh, loudspeakers, the loudspeaker, which we can call soundbar and Cliff is, uh, I think, one of the number one of the world. Right. So, you, yeah, you mentioned uh, what we would call pro cinema or commercial cinema space. Yeah. So if you go to see a movie, um, yeah, we have over 50 percent market share in the U.S. with pro cinema speakers. So it's it's a very important business for us. And yes, the um, the brand sort of started with a love of music. But over time, uh, that dynamic sound and that efficiency plays really well into you know, reproducing movie soundtracks or movie audio. So over time, we developed a, a segment of cinema business. And of course, uh, you know, you mentioned sound bars. Home theater is such an important uh, part of people's lives nowadays. You know, there's so much content to be consumed. There's so many different ways of consuming that content. But the core of it is a family sitting around a television and watching their favorite uh, show on Netflix or uh, their favorite show on Amazon Prime, whatever streaming uh, service you use. And audio is such a big part of that. And technology and displays has gotten so, so affordable. You know, you're, you're seeing more 70, 75 and 80 inch TVs on sale and you need uh, an audio yeah, system perfect. that keeps up with that. So I think it's important. And yeah, you know, our soundbar uh, business is, has been great for us. We're getting ready to launch a new series of soundbars this fall called the Cinema Series, which will incorporate Dolby Atmos, which is sort of the next generation of surround sound. So we're really excited uh, really to be on the, the cutting edge of, of that technology. Yeah, so that's our Cinema 1200, which is a uh, 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos system. It has a 12-inch wireless sub with it, which is uh, market leading. We believe that uh, in a home theater system or a pro cinema system is nothing without a good sub or two. Uh, and then it comes with uh, wireless surrounds as well. So you're getting a true uh, immersive surround system with up firing speakers to reproduce your uh, your Atmos elevation effects. 
I think it's the 600 it's also the same line, but uh, another model. Exactly right. So that's the Cinema 600, which is another 3.1 soundbar system. So it has a left, a center, and a right channel, and then the wireless 10-inch sub. But you can also pair wireless surrounds with that. So again, we don't want a soundbar customer to miss out on uh, the, the full surround sound experience. So the surround threes are wireless surrounds that you can buy uh, and then pair to that soundbar and use in addition to it. So again, you'll notice uh, on, on, sorry, on both of those soundbars, yeah. you'll notice horn loaded tweeters, right? So we're using that horn yeah. loaded technology, again, more dynamic, plays louder, more efficient. Yep, in the, the silver right and, and right. Yeah. Um, those are horn loaded tweeters and we're the only horn loaded soundbar uh, on the market. So you're getting that true cinema technology uh, that you're not getting out of other soundbars. So we have one clip to, you know, the clip you have actually, okay. uh, which uh, describes uh, with fantastic shots, etc., etc. Uh, let's see that uh, cool. for a while. By the way, I uh, mentioned, I forgot to mention about something that I actually uh, excited at the uh, at the first time I uh, experienced uh, Kalipsch. <laughs> I think it, these soundbars uh, were there, I guess, but they were like, uh, you know, prototype actually. Okay. So when I touched the soundbar, it was really wood. It was not yeah. like, you know, uh, cardboard with, you know, uh, right wood painting kind right. of a thing. It right. was real, real good. And I think it really gives uh, some sort of uh, difference uh, to the sound because uh, it's like the same in, for example, guitars, actually. If you have a really good um, wood based guitar, which they are really expensive than the other ones, the sound is better than that. So yeah. if you have a really good, uh, I think, uh, a premium uh, material as a, uh, a boot, I think it uh, differentiates it more than other uh, sound bars. Absolutely. And also other lot speakers. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a reason we build our pro cinema speakers and our, our high-end residential speakers out of wood because it's a much better, much more resolute material. Um, it doesn't resonate like a plastic cabinet would, uh, which would create you know, acoustic anomalies and acoustic issues with the speaker. It's it's a nice, robust, uh, dense material. And to sort of shortchange our soundbars by using plastic cabinet didn't really make sense to us. So yeah, we wanted our soundbars to not be built like a soundbar. We wanted our soundbars to be built like a real home theater speaker. So that's why we use wood. And that's exactly right. It's It comes through in the performance of the speaker. It comes through in the sound. And um, Again, just another another example of trying to give our customers the best uh, cinema-like sound out of our soundbars. Uh, I think uh, this is a time that we need to talk about uh, your new, brand new, the latest uh, loudspeaker, uh, Calypso Fives. Yeah, uh, which is very unique and uh, uh, only this. Uh, product kind of specialties, yeah, uh, like HDMI arc, I guess. Correct. I remember. Yep. Uh, so, well, as a product manager of this uh, product, so what do you can say to us? 
So yeah, the fives uh, are our, our newest generation of powered monitors. And I, I mentioned a little bit ago, sort of the difference between active and, and uh, passive product active or powered. Uh, so these you know, have the amplifier built in. So they actually utilize a four inch woofer, which is generally seen as kind of a smaller uh, woofer size. And of course, the larger the woofer you have, the more bass you get. But I mentioned sort of being able to, to utilize digital signal processing to get uh, a little bit more low end out of this product. So the fives were able to eke out a lot more low frequency uh, than some of our other products, some of our more passive or larger passive uh, uh, speakers. Bluetooth streaming, like you see there, has a phono input. And as you mentioned, most importantly, HDMI arc. Now, the HDMI arc came from uh, our market research, and you know, so many people were buying sound bars, and so many people were buying uh, really easy plug and play solutions for their TV. Again, um, spending more and more money on TVs and larger displays, and they needed a really good uh, high fidelity sound system. So they were buying sound bars, and they were buying sound bars because sound bars had HDMI, which allows you, because of CMT, uh, which is just a control protocol, it allows you to use one remote control for your entire system, for your TV, for your sound bar, uh, for your Blu-ray player, what have you, your streaming content. But as you mentioned earlier, powered monitors were kind of seen as more of a music product. You know, two channel, you know, use it with a with a um, turntable, and we wanted to bring a a home theater or video solution to that sound bar customer in a nicer form factor, a better sounding uh, better sounding speaker, maybe a little bit larger, and that's where the fives came in. So, uh, yeah, they're they're really built as a two-channel powered monitor system, so you can use them with music, but HDMI ARC input also allows you to tie them into your home theater system. And again, with that great bass extension out of a relatively compact speaker, goes a long way, and it's it's really one of the, the best speakers we've ever made, uh, especially on the, the powered or active side, and, and we're very proud of it, and it's doing very well for us. Yeah, I think I'm going to be a little bit potty mouth about it because that, um, you know, uh, controlling the sound with only uh, one, uh, you know, uh, channel, we can say, yeah. it's, I think, one of the best things in the world uh, because otherwise it's really pain in the egg. And because, you know, you have to do lots of things. You have to make lots of cable connections. Right. You have to, you know, use lots of remote controls. Uh, yeah. As I remember from uh, our some installations in some uh, you know events uh, for these kind of products, uh, when we use them with TV or uh, similar kind of uh, uh, you know devices, yeah. it gives you a really really hard time because yeah. uh, it's really not easy to connect. Right. And uh, like you said, it's the uh, age of convenience. So mm -hmm. if you don't have that convenient product that gives you the best joy it's kind of a uh, you know uh, some there's some kind of a absence yeah. uh, pleasure in it yeah exactly right so we at, at our house here we have a, a obviously TV uh, we have a pair of the fives plugged into the TV we have a blu-ray player and we have an Apple TV and I'm able to yeah. control the entire system with my Apple TV remote because of HDMI CEC, everything's connected via HDMI. If I if I hit the menu button on the Apple TV remote, the entire system turns on, and I'm able to control what I want to watch and how I want to watch it uh, from a single remote. And it's it's so much more convenient, even even more convenient than uh, you know the universal remote days where you'd have to program this universal remote yeah. and make sure that every everything was sort of falling in line with it. HDMI connectivity makes everything so much so much easier. Uh, so let's say again, I think it's the number one and one of only HDMI ARC uh, yeah. compatible uh, bookshelf uh, last year. Yes, it's the only it's the only HDMI ARC uh, powered monitor on the market. So we have another clip. Oh, I 
Sorry. No, no, that's okay. I just, I, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Uh, you know, home theater, sort of the, the line between home theater and, and music has always been uh, pretty light to us. You know, we can, we can sort of go both ways. And uh, we always say, if it sounds really good for music, it'll sound good for home theater, which is certainly the case. Uh, but yeah, most powered monitor companies are focused on music reproduction, and we have sort of created a product that can do both. I mean, I know lots of people doesn't into soundbars, and also mm -hmm. I know uh, lots of people doesn't into, uh, you know, uh, only um, bookshelf kind of speakers. Yeah. So when you, uh, because of these reasons, actually, these technical reasons, uh, so when you put this kind of you know easy solution, I think people will be uh thinking to uh you know that buy this product because it's easy to yeah. do anything you know if you want to listen music listen uh, and a live performance okay you can use fives but if you also want to you know watch the latest series in netflix or whatever the movie you want to watch yeah. it's also another uh you know uh, option for you so uh we have another clip uh for fives, let's watch it. Yeah, really <laughs> powerful. Uh, Great, yeah. Actually, it's just uh, underlining every detail. So, uh, we saw true something, true something yeah. in the uh, two videos. So, this is I know actually, but uh, to you know uh, say this to the, uh, our uh, viewers, uh, mm -hmm. there is a, a philosophy in this true uh, say uh, lines in the uh, yeah. videos. So uh, what is this true meaning in Klipsch world? Yeah, yeah. Um, Paul Klipsch, our founder, was always uh, a fan of telling the truth. And, um, you know, there was, there was no, uh, he was not into marketing spin at all. He was always a, a, uh, an engineer first. And if you didn't have a, a real technology or a true technology to talk about, uh, you shouldn't just make something up for the sake of marketing. And we try to follow that today. The true campaign uh, or the, the true uh, language that you saw there really is sort of encapsulating that, but also extends to sort of being true to yourself. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of brands in the, in the market today that are making, that are making good product, but we see them as sort of also ran brands and, brands that people latch onto because they see uh, somebody else buying that product. And again, a lot of great, great audio products are being built, but Klipsch is sort of this scrappy underdog brand that's building what we see as, and I think a lot of people see as the best speakers in the world right now. Yeah, pissing off the neighbors. <laughs> and it's this idea of just, you know, uh, buy, a, buy an audio product because it reflects who you are, not because it reflects somebody else. And, you know, like we talked about being able to sort of customize your own sound and sort of make it your own, um, that we see, you know, you'll, you'll see the term true you in a lot of our, our marketing. So the idea of true you is really uh, buying a product because it's a reflection of who you are and not a reflection of somebody else. We think that's really important. I think at the end of this uh, true philosophy, I think we can put yeah. this actually as, <laughs> uh, you know, this uh uh you know very good philosophy actually because yeah. <laughs> truth always you know wins because you know uh what whatever you do if it's it's uh, uh 
I will use uh, your uh, you know word if it's a crap product and it's a crap right. at you. It's just bullshit. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, you know, I didn't I didn't want to say it. Uh, this is a family <laughs> it's okay for it. But that there is something you. like you know um, swearing in another language is not uh, you know resonance in your brain like you're doing in your own language. It's, okay. I think I'm using that advantage. <laughs> yeah, that makes me feel better. We uh, so <laughs> that, that pin that you just showed that button. Um, you'll notice that it was placed on the inside of that person's lapel. Yes. So if you're wearing your jacket, normally you wouldn't see it. Paul Klipsch uh, would go to you know audio engineering society meetings and he'd go to press events uh, for other speaker brands. And if he thought that a representative from another speaker brand was touting something that wasn't true, you know, if it was marketing spin and not really based in science and research, he would he would stand up and flip the button over so it would show bullshit to whoever was talking and then he'd he'd get up and walk away so he's a little a little bit uh of an ornery guy apparently but yeah he uh, he knew he knew what was what was true and what wasn't yeah uh, i think he uh, uh i think this is the uh missing uh part in the uh, you know uh, audio acoustic <laughs> business yeah. Yeah. so so he filled this oh, actually void. Yeah, I, the, ah. you know, it's any any subjective um, industry where, you know, the quality of a product is really based solely on someone's taste. You know, so I just yeah. we make the best sounding speakers in the world. There are people that hate how horn loaded speakers sound. So it's it's great because you can, again, kind of pick the product that's a, a reflection of your taste and a reflection of your preferences. But at the same time, it does allow companies to sort of bring in this marketing spin and, and, you know, uh, publish specifications that aren't necessarily true, uh, to standardization. Uh, you can publish sort of marketing copy that doesn't really mean anything, but sounds important to someone, someone that doesn't really know what it means. And yeah, that's that's sort of the detriment of being in a, a subjective industry. Um, you know, I think a lot of a lot of brands can get away with that. That's too bad. But we're trying again. I, I mentioned engineering first for us. We try to, um, yeah, we try to try to come at every product and every really every marketing campaign from uh, the engineering aspect and the technical aspect and exactly what does this research and development or what the, does this piece of technology do to improve your listening experience? So uh, I think we're uh, coming to the end of our uh, yeah. recording. Cool. And thanks a lot for your participation. And it was really, really one of the uh, best uh, conversation I've ever made uh, in my you. entire life because it's just, yeah. you know, of uh, having these, you know, um, truths, <laughs> and also uh, it's just like a you know, uh, conversation based. So, yeah. um, thanks a lot for your participation. Thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. I knew when I saw uh, the Metallica shirt that we'd get along really well. <laughs> um. But that's why, actually, because I knew I was going to talk uh, with someone who made some <laughs> tracks, which are great, actually. I listened. Three of them because I didn't have time so much, so I just okay. sneak peeked well, three of I, them. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for the support. So uh, again, thank you so much for uh, participation of our Hi-Fi Talks uh, yeah. series, and I hope we can, you know, uh, bring uh, lots of good uh, stuff for uh, our viewers who actually needs to know about Clips. Maybe they yeah. have no idea about Clips. Maybe after that, they will maybe. Uh, you know, uh, interest about it, yeah. and uh, we are uh, eager to see new product from you. For I think the newest one uh, uh, are the headphones. Yes. Uh, as also at the end of our uh, video, I just wanted to I just want to uh, tell about uh, Klipsch and Muckler and actually a cooperation because this is really cool. Also, yeah. not uh, you know, not only sound wise, but it's also it's at the other, uh, on the other hand, it's really cool. Uh, you will have uh, we we will have 
Klipsch uh, and McLaren uh, co uh, cooperated uh, headphones right. for uh, T5 series, which mm -hmm. is second generation of it. And uh, do we have a chance uh, at the near future for maybe for some uh, speakers? Like, uh, you know, maybe maybe portable ones. I don't yeah, know. I, I would say um, uh, stay tuned. I can't can't give too much away, but I think you'll be very happy with uh, what our lineup looks like next year. And and not just not just the McLaren partnership, but the, the Klipsch product overall. But yeah, you mentioned McLaren. Uh, we, we love that partnership. They're obviously one of the, the most forward thinking companies in the world. Um, and you take these two very uh, technologically focused, uh, very R&D focused companies and put them together. And, and yeah, we've been doing great things. Yeah. So the on the left there, the T5 uh, True Wireless Sport McLaren Edition, that has launched already. Um, and yeah, it's it's been a big hit for us. And you'll start to see more uh, co-branded product as we get into the end of this year and, and into next year. So we're eager to see, uh, to uh, have the next year's lineup. Yeah. And uh, thanks a lot again, uh, Michael. Mm -hmm. So uh, have a nice day because it's, I think you have five or six hours for <laughs> yeah. uh, It's just, uh, I think it's uh, it's almost 8 p.m. in here. So. Oh, my God. Well, thanks uh, for staying up late with me. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I have, I think, five or six hours more. I can't sleep. <laughs> okay. okay. Good luck. So, see you again. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.